In this video, we're going to talk about solution sets of systems of linear equations. And at the end, we're going to introduce the notion of the rank of a matrix. Last time, we saw a solution to a 2 by 2 system. And when we solved it, we got a unique solution. We also saw a 3 by 4 system. If you recall, we had the system 2, 2, 2, 2. And when we augmented, it was a 1 over here. The next row was 4, 4, 4, 5. We augmented a 4 over here. 6, 6, 7, 8. We made a 2 over here. And when we applied uh, gauss jordan elimination to this and obtained the reduced row echelon form of this matrix, we had the matrix 1, 1, 0, 0. 7 halves was in the augmentation part. 0, 0, 1, 0. We had a negative 5 here. 0, 0, 0, 1. Over here we had a 2. And so when we look at the solution set to this thing, we would have that x1 is equal to 7 halves minus x2. x3 is equal to negative 5. And x4 is equal to 2. And that's the solution set. In this situation, we have this variable x2 that's just sitting over here. And we could put any number we want into that we would have to compute x1, and then x3 and x4, of course, have to be what they are. And that would be a solution. That means that x2 is a free, or sometimes called non-basic, variable. That is, we can plug anything into it. It's a degree of freedom to our solution set. The other variables are fixed as soon as we fix all the free variables. And they also correspond to columns that have a pivot entry, columns that we might pivot on. So in this situation, x1, x3, and x4 are basic. So this is a system where we have many solutions. We can also have systems that have no solutions. Consider this system. Let's get the reduced row echelon form of this guy just like we got this guy. Well, there's a 1 in the first pivot entry, so I don't have to multiply this row by anything. So I just immediately subtract 2 of row 1. And what do I get? I get 1, 1, 1, 0. This will turn out to be 0 as well, and this will turn out to be 1. So what are the, what are the uh, equations that I get? Well, the first equation is that x1 should be equal to 1 minus x2. That corresponds to the first row. What about the next one? Well, if, uh, it, it's kind of weird, right? So let's let's write down what this equation actually says. So it means that 0 times x1 plus 0 times x2 is equal to 1. But no matter what x1 I choose here, 0 times any number is 0. So this entire thing is 0. Over here, the same thing applies. I have 0, and I have 0 here. Adding 0 gives me 0. So this equation actually is 0 is equal to 1. This contradicts arithmetic, so it is not right. This means that there is no solution, that is, there is no choice of x1 and x2 that will ever satisfy the system. So we just have to give up. This means that we basically have three scenarios. Scenario one, we have no solution. Scenario 2, we have a unique solution, like in the 2x2 two two case. And 3, like in the 3x4 case, we could have many solutions.
now let's suppose we have let's let's write down kind of a shorthand for a system right so let's let's write our parentheses and then a is our coefficient matrix and b is this column here so i've got a augmented with b and we want to know a few questions we want to we want to answer a few questions about systems like this right we want to be able to describe the solution sets with as, as little information as possible, right? And of course that's going to depend on A and B, but what do we, what do we want to know? Well, first, uh, if we have a particular A and B, right? So uh, for specific A and B, is there a solution? Is there at least one solution, right, for specific A and B? And then how many? If there's one, are there more? Or is it just one? And also, how do we compute? Well, as before, we've essentially answered this question, right? If we get in into reduce row echelon form and there's at least one solution, then we can essentially compute everything by fixing the free variables to be whatever and then the basic variables are, are dependent. Three, well, let's suppose we want conditions on A such that we know that there's a solution to B, so that we want conditions on A such that So, so part three, A, is that we want conditions such that uh, there is at least one solution for any B. That is, any B that I chose, this condition on A ensures that I'm going to have at least one solution. Right, that's pretty powerful. How about there is at most one solution for any B? That is, I want a condition on A that essentially constrains me so that I have at most one solution for B. And part C, uh, condition is such that for any B I have a unique solution. And uh, this, this may see, seem daunting at first, but actually there's a very simple idea that we can essentially use to characterize all these situations. And that concept is a number that we can compute based on a matrix. So it's a number that we associate with a matrix that tells us exactly its behavior with, as regards to solutions. So we say that uh, the rank of a matrix A and uh, you know we'll write rank of A to denote this is the number of non-zero rows in the reduced row echelon form of A. Now rank in this context actually means row, right? So rank is another word for row. But it's, it, we're not asking how many rows are in A. We know how many rows just by looking at it. The rank tells us, tells us how many essential rows are there in A, how many important rows are in A. 
It's, it's essentially a, a measure of how many real rows there should be. Now let's go back and, uh, and look at the rank for our examples. So in this example, we computed the reduced row echelon form. Let's look at this A, this coefficient matrix. Well, this is a non-zero row. This is a non-zero row. This is a non-zero row. So the rank is three, right? It has three rows, and it has rank three, and it has four columns. What about if we augment the matrix? Well, this is a zero row in the augmented, I mean, this is a non-zero row huh? in the augmented matrix. This is a non-zero row in the augmented matrix, as is this. So the rank of the augmented matrix is three. How about this guy? Well, for the coefficient matrix, I have one non-zero row, and then this is a zero row, so the rank is one. However, in the augmented system, I have one non-zero row, and then another, because I have a one right here. So that means that the rank of this matrix is two. Now, using this notion of rank, we're going to answer every single one of these questions. And we're going to do that in the next few videos.